everyone, I'm Dan Philgreen, and this is Shell Point Today for Monday, June 23rd. On today's show, we learn about this month's library book talk author from a resident who hosted him for dinner. We'll meet our new home care director, Terry Bystedt, and we'll be serenaded by the fabulous foursome from our Route 66 variety show. But first, let's cover our Monday headlines with Rochelle Chernowski at the news desk. Rochelle. Thank you very much, Dan. It's a very busy Monday here at Shell Point, and we want to remind you of some of the noteworthy events. If you love shells, you'll definitely want to be at the Grand Cypress Room this morning, where representatives from Lover's Key State Park will discuss the beautiful shells we can find in our own backyard. Come learn more about shells, and if you've got exotic shells of your own, bring them for a show and tell. This shell event happens this morning at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. In the Academy, two events should grab your attention. Dr. Chris Vadalato is discussing the latest issues in brain health, including dementia assessment and treatment. His talk takes place this afternoon at 1 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. And tomorrow, Professor Adrian Kerr discusses the events that led up to the writing of the U.S. Constitution. It's the perfect class to gear us up for Independence Day. Prelude to the U.S. Constitution happens tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. To sign up for any of these events, call the Island Service Desk at 454-2282 or the Woodlands Service Desk at 454-2054. And what better way to celebrate independence than by exercising your constitutional right to vote? There is a special election tomorrow to replace Lee County's representative in Congress. And if you're a full-time Shell Point resident, then your polling place is in the social center on the island. Polls open tomorrow at 7 a.m. and are open until 7 p.m. Once again, the polling place for tomorrow's special election in the social center is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And because of limited parking, please utilize the buses if you can. Also tomorrow, we have a special library book talk, special for two reasons. One, the location has been moved to the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Two, our resident presenter knows the author personally. All are invited to Library Book Talk tomorrow at 2 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. To preview the book, here is Anna Marie Tesoriero. I like to read, and that sounded like fun in school when we did that from, you know, the earliest times. I could read all I wanted, but I didn't know how hard it was going to be. <laughs> English literature at Hunter College of the City of New York, and then I went for my master's in education there, elementary education. I liked fiction. I liked medieval stories, Chaucer. I like everything, really. I lived in Freehold, New Jersey, and there's a lovely Barnes and Nobles off Route 9. And we said, let's go to her book signing. John Searles, he writes paranormal mysteries and coming of age books. And he was uh, talking about boy still missing. And he was so ingratiating and nice. And I e was emailing him back and forth because he gave us his email address. And that was pretty good. I mean, who ever heard of you doing? So there was a lot of trust. So I said, oh, when you, and then I heard he was coming back to Barnes and Nobles. No, he emailed me. I said, okay, come to my house for dinner. And he did. And my husband was there, my daughter was there, some of my neighbors, and we were really too excited to eat. And he came in a limousine. So by word of mouth, he was getting a following. And we kept on the correspondence. It was taking him five years to write the next one. Help for the Haunted. Uh, you could take it again on three different levels. Coming of age of a girl named Sylvie. A mystery, how, why were her, how were her uh, parents murdered and why? And then the paranormal, are there ghosts in life? And what, I, what is happening in her haunted house? But it's just not a haunted house because every body in that book is probably haunted in some way. Tuesday, June 24th, two o'clock, 
in the Woodland Grand Cypress Room, and there will be refreshments, and I think you're going to find them different. You'll see why, but you have to come to see why these refreshments are different. If you read the book, you'll find out more. <laughs> Everyone who likes to read mysteries, paranormal books, and uh, ghost stories, uh, like to uh, know about a different author, I think everybody would enjoy it. It's different. And now Dan is here to tell us about the newest member of our healthcare family. Dan? Thank you, Rochelle. Our Shell Point home care team is a valuable resource for residents who need care in their homes, whether it's just a couple of hours at a time or 24 hours a day. Home care recently experienced two big changes. They expanded and moved their offices, which are now located on the first floor of the Larson Pavilion by the Lagoon entrance. And after the retirement of manager Joanne Myers, they welcomed a new manager, Terry Bystep. We sat down with Terry to learn how home care can benefit you. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Minear, Vice President of Healthcare Services here at Shell Point. And today I want to introduce you to Terry Bystep, our new home care director here at Shell Point. Tell us a little bit about yourself and some of the background you have in home care. Well, um, a little bit about myself. I spent most of my adult life in Switzerland as a nurse anesthetist and on the Swiss rescue team where I in enjoyed amazing rescue services and rescue adventures. Were you rappelling down the side of the mountain with an injured skier or something under one arm and being the real heroine? Yes. I was. I was repelling down the mountain, roped down the mountain, laying on the Autobahn in the middle of snow, disappearing for minutes in rivers. Mm. Um, it was really exciting, but 14 years ago I came back to the United States and went directly into home care. For the folks that have never heard about Shell Point Home Care and the services we might offer, can you just share a bit of what we do? Yes, um, we'll define home care. Home care is when you have an, an aid or a companion or even a nurse or a licensed practical nurse, whatever you should need, come to your home and care for you in the privacy of your own home. Helping you with your activities of daily living is what we call it. It's bathing as far as brushing your teeth, doing your nails, shaving getting you dressed, bringing you to the table. Let's say you broke an arm or something and you need help with that. That's what we are here for. It's called hands-on care. We also do a nursing assessment that's clinical. We find out about your medications. We find out about your diagnoses, of course, all private, but we know about you so you can feel comfortable. We also offer some services for someone who is perhaps con contemplating that they might need some help down the road for a loved one who perhaps they are caring for at this point in time. That's peace of mind and some other services like that. Could you explain those? Yes, I'll explain. Peace of mind is when we have a couple and one is basically the main caregiver for the other. If that caregiver should become ill or need to leave, we are available to come in and replace that caregiver. If that person who is being cared for becomes sick, we are also able to take care of that person as well. But the, the, the main reason for peace of mind is to support the caregiver. So we find out, we come in and assess that person needing the care early right. so that we know everything about them when that immediate need arises. Exactly. I'd like to stress the importance of being signed up, whether it be for peace of mind or now and then. I'll explain now and then as exactly what it sounds like now and then. You need us because you're going away, we, you don't feel well, um, you need to go shopping, you can't drive. It's just now and then. We also have regu regular um, caregiving. We give care on a 24 hour, seven days a week basis for 
some of our clients. We give care for two hours a day. So it is, ju we are just so flexible. Tell us a little bit about what you believe related to Sh Shell Point's home care services and why we would like our folks to consider using our home care services. Well, first of all, our home care employees are Shell Point employees. Mm -hmm. That means they have the attitude of respect and caring because they are part of this community and they bring that attitude especially to their clients. Another aspect is that Shell Point is able to fulfill a need or re a request much, much quicker than any outside agency. We have um, information if you should really be sick. We have information about your, your health, where you live, who you live with. Mm -hmm. It's an automatic aspect and I can point out that one time last week we had a call at four and were able to staff it for 24 hours at five. It is, as you said, a Shell Point employee. It's someone that we know has been schooled in the Shell Point culture, caring, serving, satisfying. They're covered by our insurance, the liability standpoint. And most importantly, if the resident is not happy or has a concern, they can call you and you deal with it. So Terry, I see now that home care has moved and we're in a different location than we were before. So can you tell us where we are, how, to, how folks should get here, and then the phone number to call when they want home care services? Okay, we're, we are still in the pavilion. You can just walk over to us. You have access to us. You will see us if you look into the window and you're welcome to come in at any time. Our telephone number is 239-454-2242. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to call. So again, when you're out walking by the lagoon and you get near the back door of the pavilion, that's right where home care is, come right in, see everybody, see the new offices, and we'd love to have you. So give us a call when you need our services. So, because of the church auditorium being renovated this summer, we have no official summer concert series. But for you music fans, we're doing our best to offer small concerts around our campus to keep the music going. The next one happens tomorrow with violinist Emily Ann Thompson. She performs traditional Irish, Scottish, and Canadian music with passion and enthusiasm. She plays violin, piano, mandolin, banjo, and more. And her husband also joins her on guitar, percussion, and vocals. Come hear this free performance from Emily Ann Thompson tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. in the Resident Activity Center on the island. Of course, we had some great music in April for our Route 66 variety show. We had all sorts of entertaining acts, as you can see on page 28 of this month's Shell Point Life magazine. One of the highlights was the title song, Route 66, sung in a close harmony arrangement from the four freshmen. So here they are, accompanied by Randy Woods on the piano, our own fabulous foursome, Jim Davey, Ken Nusselrod, David Nusselrod, and Tim Stevenson. If you ever plan to motor west, Travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on Route 66. It winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way. on Route 66. Now you go through St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, and Oklahoma City's mighty pretty. You'll see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino. Won't you get hit to this timely tip when you make that California trip? 
get your kicks on Route 66. Oklahoma City's mighty pretty, you'll see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico, Flagstaff, Arizona, don't forget Winona, Kingman, Barstow, San Bernardino, won't you get hit to this timely tip, when you make that California trip? Get your kicks, 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 get your kicks on Route, Route 66, 66, 66. Stay tuned all this week for more highlights from our Route 66 variety show. And if you'd like a DVD of the entire show, they're available for just $10. Contact SPTV at 489-8431 to get your copy today. For now, let's get a preview of this week's Channel 12 radio show, Listening to the Words. A theme for this week's Listening to the Words is difficult to pin down. Let me say it's about differing perspectives choices, ways of looking at things. First, a description of summer in Southwest Florida. Who better to do that than News Press Tropicalia editor Amy Williams? Next, a retired minister uses the old-time game of marbles as an example for turning a negative into a helpful positive. Then engage your olfactory power to enjoy a grandmother's peas and butter recipe that a gourmet describes as the best peas she ever ate. Then retired minister Charles Shepson of Shell Point tells us how he turned the anniversary of his wife's death into a happy anniversary. Then Ted Boynton of Shell Point looks back to the beginning of what is now his 70th wedding anniversary with his wife, Mary. All that and more awaits you when you tune to Shell Point Channel 12. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in with the happening segment of Shell Point TV. My name is Leslie Brand, and I'm here with Bev Chanley, and we are here to go over all the activities that are going on for today. We're going to start at 9 o'clock with Round Robin Doubles Tennis at the Tennis Courts. 9.15, Billiards in the Resident Activity Center. Also at 9.15 is Pottery, with instruction available in the Pottery Studio. And lastly at 9.15 is Virtual Bowling in the Resident Activity Center. 10 o'clock is the Lifestyle of Shells in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodland. Sign up is required. 10.30, Disciples Men's Study Group in the Game Room of the Woodlands. 10.45, Table Tennis Clinic in the Tarpon Room on the Island. 11.30, Health Connection, Specifics in Cardio Conditioning in the Health Club. That class is currently full. Now here's Bev for the afternoon activities. Thank you, Leslie. At 12 o'clock, we're going to have Mahjong. That's played in the Sable Room of the Woodlands today. 1.15 is the time Samba, the card game, will be at the Resident Activity Center. Also at 1.15, we have table tennis. That's in the tarpon room. At 1.15, we have tone chimes in the Osprey room. We also have a 1.15 free help with Windows 8.1. That's in the computer teaching center down in the tunnel. Arrive anytime between 1.15 and 3 o'clock. At 1.45, we have a health connections balance and mobility training level one in the health club. That's currently full. Now, 2 o'clock is the time for the beady-eyed bead club. They'll be in the oak room of the woodlands. 
We have a health connections class at 3 o'clock. This one is Pilates Stretch. That's in the health club on the island. And we have a 3.30 health connections, Aqua Agility and Conditioning. That's held in the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. And we round out the evening at 6.30 with Duplicate Bridge in the game room of the Woodlands. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you back here for the happening segment tomorrow. Hello, everyone. I'm Terry Koleff with your Academy Information for Monday, June 23rd. At 10.30, our Appreciating Words class continues in the Oak Room of the Woodlands, and they welcome everyone. At 1 o'clock, Mahjong Defense and Strategies continues on the second floor in the arbor in the country kitchen. At 1 o'clock, what's new in brain health in the Grand Cypress Room? Now, I know this is a full class, but sometimes people's plans change at the last minute and they're not able to make it. So you're welcome to stop by and see if we have any extra chairs as the class begins. Tomorrow, we have a new class with Professor Adrian Kerr. He's going to the, to the United States Constitution. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is grilled chicken and tortellini with breadsticks and broccoli. The dinner special is all home cooking night for $9.95, and the soup of the day is cream of chicken. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is an Italian sausage sandwich with peppers and onions and fries for $7.25. The dinner special is grilled tilapia with tomato relish, rice pilaf, and mixed vegetables for $8.25, and the palm grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor of the Village Church. And you know, occasionally people will ask me questions about what I believe or maybe about what the church believes, about the Bible or theology or who knows what. And one of the questions I get from time to time goes something like this. Do you believe in the appearing of Jesus Christ? Now, I think I know what they mean by that question. What they mean is, do you believe in the second coming of Christ? And of course, yes, I do. But you know, I have a little bit of an impish side about me that sometimes shows up at times like that. And so when someone asks, do you believe in the appearing of Jesus Christ? I'm tempted to ask, well, which appearing? It's a good question, actually. And that's because biblically, the notion of the appearing of Christ is treated in three different tenses, which means three different kinds of appearing at three different times. Sometimes it's possible to find passages of Scripture which summarize all three of them, and Hebrews chapter 9 is one of those passages. The text goes like this, For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own, for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself." And just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. In this passage, the appearing of Christ is mentioned in all three tenses, three different appearances at three different times for three different purposes. And all of them are wonderfully encouraging for those who trust Jesus alone for their salvation. First, the appearing of Jesus has happened in the past. Uh, chapter 9, verse 26 puts it this way, But as it is, he has appeared once for all, at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. This was the first appearing of Christ, the one when Jesus came to live a life of righteousness that we could not live and then died on the cross to pay the just penalty for the sins of all of those who would ever believe in him. The second appearing is occurring right now. Verse 24 of chapter 9 says, For Christ has entered not into holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. In this case, his appearing is before God the Father, not in a man-made temple, but in heaven itself, the true temple. 
And this is happening, this appearing is happening now. The text says, now to appear in the presence of God. And it is happening for us now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. So Jesus is up there, but he is for us. We at the Village Church want to develop a community of believers who will be encouraged, uplifted, by the knowledge that we have a Savior who is on the job for us even now. Jesus now appears in the presence of God the Father on our behalf. And finally, Jesus will appear. He is coming again. Verse 28 says, Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Now, this second appearance is second for us. He appeared on earth first to make his sacrifice for sins, and he will appear again secondly to complete our salvation by bringing about the resurrection for, of the dead. But it is the third appearing in this passage, the other one being his appearing before the Father. And so this final coming or appearing is the source of hope for the people of God. He will come again to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. So let me ask you, are you eagerly waiting for the Lord Jesus? If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus, you should be. You should long to see him. And while waiting is involved, it is an eager waiting, the text tells us. Eagerly waiting. Two words that we don't usually put together. But for the believer, they are not incongruous. They reflect an inherent hope and desire to see the consummation of our salvation. And so we at the Village Church want to develop a community of hopeful people, people who have a future orientation, who are longing to see Jesus come again. So do I believe in the appearing of Jesus? Indeed, in all three appearings of Jesus. The first in his appearing to provide the sacrifice for sins in putting away sins so that we would be assured of our salvation. The second in his appearing before the Father, interceding for us so that we would be saved completely, so we would be an encouraged people day by day. And the third in his appearing to consummate our salvation bringing about the resurrection of the dead so we would be a people of hope, longing for the day when we would see Jesus. I hope that you are encouraged by these truths, and we would invite you to join us in becoming part of our growing community, assured, encouraged, and hopeful because of the three appearings of Jesus on our behalf. Thank you for joining us for Village Church Connections, and we hope to see you very soon. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as Ruth Duber offers a recipe for a breakfast food that's good anytime, cinnamon French toast. We'll also get a song from Nancy Reed, who showed at the Route 66 Variety Show that she was queen of the cafe. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, June 23rd. I'm Rochelle Chernowski. And I'm Dan Philgreen. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.